Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Vanessa Godella, and I'm one of your Peekskill City Council members. I'm very excited to work, welcome all of you to our very first Peekskill Coronavirus Stakeholder Updates call. Uh, now, the purpose of these calls is to create a space for community leaders to convene in a COVID safe way with the intention of helping members of the public to understand and support efforts to respond to the coronavirus crisis pro by providing weekly updates from key agencies, as well as including ways that we can all pitch in and lessen the burden. So as mentioned, these calls will happen on a weekly basis every Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Our intention is to live stream these meetings in the future, either, either through our YouTube page or our city Facebook page to allow for the public to ask questions during the meeting. Uh, but since this is our first call and we're still trying to figure out our tech cap capabilities, uh, we will just be recording this and broadcasting uh, this video online and via the government channel after afterwards. So um, as mentioned, every week we uh, will be rotating stakeholders to give the public the ability to hear from a variety of agencies as well as from different department heads here at City Hall. Uh, but today we will be specifically hearing from uh, uh, Deb Malone from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Reverend Phillips, and a number of other members of the uh, HRH Care, uh, Tuesday McDonald from the Youth Bureau. Uh, we will also be hearing from Dr. Mauricio from the School District, uh, Lieutenant Andrew Grant from the Ambulance Corp, uh, Cynthia Knox from CHOP. Uh, we'll be hearing from Jonathan Zamora, our, our department head um, in regards to the seniors and the food program, as well as Reverend uh, Graham from uh, PAPA, and lastly, finishing off with our city manager who will give us an update on uh, city operations. Uh, but before we go ahead and jump into the agenda, I will uh, pass it over to our mayor to give us a few welcoming remarks. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. I know everybody wants to get right into it and uh, get this information out there. But I just want to say thank you to Council Person Agudelo, our City Manager Andy Stewart, and to everybody that's um, on this call. Um, it's very, very important that we get as much information out as we possibly can. Um, it's also important that we we continuously con uh, encourage social distancing. There's a lot of information coming to the city on a daily basis from the county and from the state. Um, in the governor's office, so uh, we encourage anybody that's watching this um, video right now. This is a very, this is going to be uh, in a very, a very informative dialogue. But I still encourage everyone who's interested in what the city is doing to make sure you uh, check the daily updates that we put on the city website. Um, we're also using the social media platform for those of you who pr prefer to go to social media versus the city website and also the government channel. A lot of the information we're putting on the government channel. So if you're interested in knowing what the city is doing, the best ways to, to find out other than these phone calls will be the city website, um, the city social media page, and the, um, and the city, government uh, city government channel. So if you don't have access to the internet, check out the government channel. If you don't happen to have a television, um, uh, please, please look at our city website and our, uh, our social media page as well. Other than that, all of the stakeholders that are on here this morning, good morning. I hope you had your coffee. I thank you all for taking time out of your day to be here. And um, I, I look forward to working, continuously working with you and getting through this process. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for whoever's watching and tuning in. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and dive in. Uh, first, we have uh, Deb Malone from the Chamber of Commerce who will be giving us an update on uh, our local businesses in the area. Deb? Hi, thank you, Vanessa, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I don't necessarily need to be on every call going forward, only if there's important updates. I do want to let you know what we've been doing. Obviously, we have been communicating through Facebook and our website, we have a special link on our website. But most of the inf most of what we've been doing has been dealing, help working with the small business community on uh, the SB on the SBA PPP and the EIDL grants. Um, we have been um, some members who Wells Fargo is not participating with this program. Uh, so I have contacted all local banks to see if they are taking applications from, uh, from non-customers 
the only bank that is doing that right now is Citizens Bank, which is not located here in Peekskill, but they are taking applications for non-customers, priority obviously given to customers first. Um, there has been um, a great deal of anxiety uh, with businesses trying to get through um, to find out the status of their loans and their application process. Um, we have been uh, working with, uh, I have a call in a little while with the um, SBDC counselor and having him make personal calls to some businesses who are having difficulties with the application and what they qualify for. Um, and so that is, has been our, our focus at, the, at this point. Obviously, we're communicating all of the information on restaurants and the local businesses um, and what they've been sending us. And I do want to let you know that during this time, I have been communicating with all members past and present uh, from our database. Regardless of their membership status, I'm sending this information out to all the businesses that we have in our database, which is over 700. So um, with that, um, you know, there's really not much more I can, can update you on. Uh, again, this is a fluid situation. The grant issue is, is, is a very big issue. So um, I'll keep, uh, you know, you posted and Andy posted on any, um, you know, updates I may have on that, that you can communicate out. Um, also too, we are working very closely with the Business Council of Westchester, the Business Council of New York State, and also Westchester County Government, Bridget Gibbons Office, um, and of course, the Business Improvement District. So um, we're all in communication with each other. And if anybody has any questions for me or for the chamber, um, uh, my email is, you can see my name up there is D-M-I-L-O-N-E at hvgatewaychamber.com. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Thank you so much, Deb, for those updates. Uh, did anyone have any questions for Deb Malone on, on anything she just covered? Yes, I'm sorry. I did. Deb, you said the only bank that was doing the, uh, that was in the SBA program was Citizens Bank? To non-customers. But so Chase Bank and all the other banks are doing it to their customers for their customers yes, only. Yes, and Wells Fargo is not participating at all. Yeah, I heard about that one. Okay. okay. All right. So, I mean, I reached out to Chase, M&T, Orange Bank, Tompkins Financial. Uh, I've reached out to every one of them, and they are only um, allowing well, loans. For their customers. customers. Okay. Okay. Well, as far, well, as far as well, is. Hopefully, right. somebody will say, okay, we'll open it up to non-customers. Well, not participating, but. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Well, maybe that's that's something that we can, as a city, send a letter um, and encourage them to do so. Um, you can try. I think this is a policy. Um, of, you know, you know. Uh, I'm not going to say don't, <laughs> but you know, I don't know um, if I'm sure a lot of communities are in the same position as we are. Okay, with banks um, not providing loans or appl accepting applications from non-customers. Right. Hi, Andy, Deb. I think you're... Stephanie. Hi. Uh, Wells Fargo is our bank, the Presbyterian Church, and we did submit an application. They weren't receiving applications after, I think, April the 4th or the 5th, but we got ours in early. So I'm hope is this a new development? This is the PPP, the stimulus package applications um, that I'm talking about. It's payroll protection program. Okay, not the small business. Yes, yes. Um, th th it's nothing to do with the SBA. Uh, you, you can file directly through the SBA. Obviously, there has been a lot of backlog. Um, I'm getting emails from businesses. Have you heard of anybody getting information on, you know, uh, the progress of their application? Uh, I have not. I've asked members who have submitted applications, SBA applications, if they have gotten a response yet. They have not. 
Um, they say it's going to take a week. I, I think it's going to take much longer than that. Okay. We also have the backlog of the um, of the unemployment. Um, the, you know, the unemployment site is. Um, um, it's it. It took me ten days to get on for my husband, and finally, and then get the application processed. But um, you know, it's everybody's trying to do this at once. So I understand the uh, restrictions based on technology, but at the same time, everybody's getting nervous and they want to get, you know, they want information on on their loan applications and what they can do next and when they can expect to get any uh, uh, support money. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Um, if, if there was one thing you could, if there's one way that the community could be helpful to the business community right now, uh, what, what, would, what would that thing be? Is, if there's, do you have a recommendation, a call to action for our community members in terms of um, kind of lessening the burden that a lot of our businesses are, are now facing with, with everything going on with the pandemic? I, I think, you know, what the community has been doing is, is what they should be continuing to do is to support the, uh, our business community, especially, I mean, we have a lot of restaurants here um, and continuing to get takeout, um, you know, buy gift cards from small retailers for future use, um, do what they can to continue to support their business, you know, our local businesses. Obviously, there's nothing the community can do regarding the grants and the, um, you know, the application process. But the chamber is working very hard to keep the communication lines open with these businesses and helping them, assisting them through the difficulties of the process. But just continue to be out there, get takeout. You see every day, I know Lauren posts on our Facebook page, daily updates. Our Facebook page has uh, increased over 700% over the last um, couple of weeks. Um, and um, a lot of our uh, feeds are being shared but all the information's there. It's, I know it's on your website. It's on the BID website. So um, there's plenty of access for local uh, community members to see who is open, who is doing takeout. And I want to thank um, the Rotary Club, Chappie Manzer, um, for what they're doing and providing meals every Friday beginning tomorrow. Um, and um, I think we all come together during a time like this. So um, I, I thank Chappie and the Rotary and also the Hope for Youth Foundation. Thank you. And, and we, we also thank them as well. Uh, thank you so much, Deb, for being on the call. I know you have to get off, yeah. but if anyone else has any, for, for folks watching at home, if anyone else has any other questions for Deb, feel free to reach out to her again at dmalone at hvgateway.com. Is that correct? HV Gateway Chamber. <laughs> yes, HV Gateway I, Chamber. I had to add one more word into that to make it, longer okay yeah. <laughs> great well thank you so much Deb <clears throat> okay bye guys have, have a, a great day bye bye mm -hmm. alrighty so now I'll pass it over to Reverend Phillips um, to uh, get us started with updates from HRH care okay um, can you hear me yes Okay. Um, well, certainly it, it, it's good for us to be able to be a part of this. I just want to start off sharing in terms of <clears throat> Hudson River Healthcare uh, is an entity that has 43 sites uh, going from Hudson, New York, down through both sides of the Hudson Valley and on into New York City and then into the, the five boroughs and then into um, Long Island. And I share that so that when we're giving um, reports and updates, we're, we're talking about from time to time a wider network, but also we'll do things that might be specific to peak skill. And, and, and with that, there are services that are being offered now. We've, again, for the social distancing, we've been able to do, uh, start out with our telemed services as well as telephone. And this is where the patient on their uh, smartphone or by telephone can engage with their provider. 
and, and discuss whatever issues that may be um, current in their medical um, uh, visit. And so visits are continuing to go forward in that sense. We do have certain services that were mandated by the governor to um, to only do on an emergency basis. And that was for our dental department. Because of the amount of, uh, of the uh, PPE uh, gear that would have to be used in the dental department, they're only allowed to do uh, extreme emergencies at this particular time. And then the other uh, podiatry uh, as well as optometry, because these are close uh, uh, services that would give close contact. And so those uh, are, were um, mandatorily uh, taken out from our actual service. And at this time then, I would like to um, have you, you can speak with uh, Ben or um, Eric and they can give you their perspective on some other areas. And I'd like to introduce you to David Erickson, who's our Vice President for Grants. And uh, David can give you some updates on our statistics about testing and where we are. David? Great. Um, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be able to uh, offer some updates. Um, I'd just like to echo the remarks of the mayor uh, that the the primary vehicle we have at our disposal um, to uh, mitigate the effects of coronavirus are abiding by social distancing recommendations. Um, and it is, it is seemingly having a, a positive effect on the state of the pandemic in New York. Um, for broader context, about 365,000 uh, uh, people have been tested in New York State and 149,000 have tested positive. That's about 40% testing positive. Um, we've tested over 100 people in peak skill, and we're at about a 45% uh, positive rate. So um, we're pretty much sort of aligned with where the county, um, uh, with where the state is. Um, we have uh, uh, seen a sort of decrease in the doubling rate of cases within Westchester County, but um, it may simply be a blip in terms of the epidemiological data. So, um, so maintaining social distancing and washing of hands and all of the rest uh, remains really critical. Something uh, we just wanted to add about, um, about the services being provided telemedically is that during this period of emergency, um, previously uh, it, it wasn't permitted to receive services telemedically if you were a new patient it is now so if someone is experiencing a health condition and need to be in touch with a doctor immediately we can uh, enroll them as a new patient uh, over the phone um, with video conferencing and stuff like that so um, uh, so that remains a really um, a vital source of medical access, particularly if people have uh, prescriptions that they need to renew or um, or or feel like they, they they may have a condition that deserves or warrants some kind of um, medical triage. Um, we're certainly available for that. Um, we have continued to do testing in peak skill, um, but um, Again, the criteria for testing and the recommendations uh, around it um, are, uh, are focused on, when possible, avoiding uh, interpersonal contact and maintaining uh, a sort of physical separation uh, from people. And so uh, we follow a, a specific algorithm in screening people as to whether or not um, testing is, is warranted. Um, so we'll continue to do that work and, um, and continue to provide updates on, on sort of the a broad state level, but also uh, trying to drill down into what we know based on our own internal data for uh, the city of Peekskill. Uh, David, if I could just add um, just some context here, and again, numbers and everything is very dynamic, but under CDC projections, today is actually the peak day for New York State where we're at the top of the curve. Um, we're going to see the curve coming down, but obviously there can be rebounds and all of that. And a lot of that is really 
projecting on the maintenance of social distancing and isolation. Um, the curve is looking right now as it's going to hit the, the flat line for capacity around the beginning of May. Um, but it will take easily the month of May for that trend to increase. But once again, all of that is based on maintaining the high level of social distancing. So as this group and certainly within HRH are working on our planning, part of that process is trying to consider duration, how long do these measures need to be in effect and what kind of time frames we're we looking for. There are risks of rebound and other things that make these curves very good guesses, but nothing that, you know, we would bet on. Well, thank you all so much for, for sharing uh, those updates. Do we have any questions from our stakeholders on the call? I'm not hearing any questions. Um, thank you again for, for being part of this discussion. Um, Hudson River Healthcare plays a, a vital, critical role here in our community. So it's, it is really important to hear um, about what you are all working on and, and we appreciate um, the resources that you've been able to provide to our community members. So moving on, um, I will pass it over to Ms. Tuesday McDonald who will give us an update on the Youth Bureau. Ms. Tuesday. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Um, yeah, so I wanna talk a little bit about um, the Youth Bureau getting ready for our summer programming. Um, annually, we have a grant from the county where we are able to hire uh, young people, about 50 of them per year. And we work closely with the city of Peekskill because it's actually a internship where we actually pay them through the grant, but a, a business owner, an agency um, is able to be a mentor to those youth over the summertime. And we know that we're you know, kind of going through a uh, pandemic right now. So we don't know what that's going to look like in terms of businesses being comfortable, you know, with having these interns over the summertime. But we are nonetheless having a pre-registration, uh, which started yesterday. Um, any parent, um, any youth who's looking for some summer um, training over the summer, uh, certainly go to our website, to the city's website, uh, and download those forms. You can send them back to the youth borough. And then we also have a summer program uh, that the youth borough has been doing for probably over 15 years called Advancing Lift. Uh, and this is for our 10 to 13 year olds. It's a free program. Um, your youth are with us from 9.30 in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, so certainly that registration also has started. And then also we have MBK Rising Tide Boat Building with uh, Mr. Taylor. So uh, that also is a registration. It also starts for the summertime. And then I also want um, the community to know that, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of virtual learning uh, across the board, for, you know, for youth and Pete skill. And also if anyone is interested, especially during this time, to get some task uh, GED training, uh, please contact me at the Youth Barrel, 914-734-4149, or also um, via email, tmcdonald at cityofpeatskill.com, because we have all of these classes going on for our youth. We want to make sure that our community is taking, is taking advantage of, you know, these uh, classes, these trainings, these webinars um, that we have, and any other questions about anything, uh, certainly uh, go to our website, uh, the City of Peace Girl website, and then just look, go to the tab, um, Youth Barrel. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, oh, and the ask, I'm sorry, and the ask is definitely, we really need our city leaders and businesses and agencies to help us um, with some of the um, internships um, over the summer uh, for our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. I, I just have one question, if, if I can. Um, the summer uh, employment program, when, when would that normally start? Like, like June, July? Uh, 
No, it actually starts um, normally the Monday after the 4th of July. Okay, after 4th of July, okay. Yes, and, and then it runs for about five weeks. Gotcha. So they're still doing registration just in case this all passes. We well, still... you, you know, we're trying to do Mayor Rainey. You know, we're just trying to just be, you know, as optimistic as we possibly can. Certainly we yeah. don't know, you know, like when, you know, we're going to be able to, you know, to, to at least start. Um, right you know, proceeding, you know, like we used to. But yeah. for right now, um, we're at least getting ready for it, you know. Just in um, case, yeah. Yeah, you know. That's just awesome. Ready to do it. All right, that's all I had. And I just want to say to Reverend, Reverend Phillips and Dave, um, you know, thank you both um, for your information. I'm definitely keeping tabs on your, on your website. What um, maybe, Andy, what we can try to do is, is uh, well, I'm sure you probably already had this in mind, if, if you collect all the information, I don't know how much of it we could put on the city city website, but anything that you know you you compile today, if you send it to me, I could definitely share on my platform to try to get some more of the information out as well. Uh, that sounds okay. great, Mayor. And this this, as we said before, this actual the audio and video of this will be broadcast so people can can listen for themselves. And uh, I'm taking notes, and we'll see we'll see how it might make sense to distribute those. Okay. Um, I just want to note also on the on the youth bureau, you know, everybody's working real hard to find ways of telecommuting these days, and maybe there would be a way for for us to support youth employment that is remote that might be helpful to local businesses or agencies in various ways. So that would be an interesting kind of challenge, um, but maybe there's a way to to create opportunity in that space. Uh, aside from or in addition to on-site employment. Thanks, Sandy. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. McDonald. Did, did anyone else have any other questions on the Youth Bureau? No? All righty. So we'll, we'll keep on going. Um, so now we'll hear from Dr. Mauricio, who will give us an update on the Peace School School District. Dr. Mauricio? Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, anyone, everyone able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great, great. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Councilperson uh, Agudelo and Mayor and City Manager for organizing this uh, stakeholder group. Uh, as part of our, our district efforts, I'd like to just first thank the Mayor and Mrs. McDonald. We had a, uh, a kind of a town hall meeting with the uh, joint effort with the city school district, um, the mayor, Mr. McDonald, and our PTO uh, executive officer. We had probably 600 and people, uh, 680 people dial in uh, or go online for the virtual event. And so we were very excited. Uh, normally our board meetings have probably about 25 people. So certainly the uh, popularity of, of the mayor and Ms. McDonald certainly helped. And so we appreciate their, <laughs> their efforts in, in uh, joining with us. And so, uh, but a lot of uh, great information was shared with the community as a collective effort. And I think that's what the people uh, truly appreciated is that we were all in this together, similar to this uh, phone call uh, as well. So thank you, uh, city manager, for organizing this and councilperson Agudelo. Uh, just a brief update from the school district and uh, we have served over 20,000 meals uh, on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, in our two sites, the high school and Oakside. And we chose Oakside because of its close proximity to uh, Bowman Towers and that Main Street uh, corridor. And so we thought that's a very important place for our community where families might need access to quality food. And so, um, again, over 20,000 meals have been served. And I want to thank our food service, our security, and our custodial engineers who have uh, really been instrumental in, in making this happen. Uh, we've handed out over 250 Chromebooks from 8th grade through 12th grade, and that is uh, primarily uh, supporting students getting online to access uh, uh, courses that they need towards graduation. And so we are very excited about being able to do that. Uh, we have a child care program per the governor's uh, mandate, and that is um, uh, generally focused on uh, medical professionals and first responders. So uh, to those on the call and those listening in from the community, if you're a uh, first responder, a uh, EMT, paramedic, police, uh, 
fire, uh, you work at uh, any of the local prisons, um, and, and need child care in, in order for you to go to work, we have a program that is uh, free for you from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then there is a 3 to 6 p.m. program that is a uh, paid program uh, with healthy uh, kids, which is a local agency that provides that programming as well. And so uh, that program is located at Uriah Hill, and uh, we have staff there uh, Monday through Friday to support our first uh, responders and our medical professionals. And we want to say a big thank you uh, to all that they do for our community and, and for our uh, children as well. Um, also, uh, we are providing uh, for about three weeks now online learning opportunities for our students, and that was primarily in middle school and high school, and students are able to log in every day and be able to access the learning. I do want to share the message because there was a, uh, a rumor out there, you know, which becomes reality that uh, the year was lost, uh, that, that um, some high school students in, uh, in particular thought that the year's over, they're going to have to repeat next year, therefore why bother uh, logging in and, and completing their work. I want to just uh, adamantly dispel that rumor. This year is uh, still in effect, um, and uh, uh, this is a very important year, and so uh, we need everyone to log in every day, complete their work, because the, you will get credit for your coursework and be able to apply that towards graduation. Uh, and that also uh, applies for kids from pre-K all the way to fifth grade as well. So very important that everyone stays engaged. And uh, we have heard uh, some students saying they need some more parent uh, pushing them to, to make sure that they're uh, on top of their studies, creating a schedule uh, that they can follow. And uh, just as you push them to go to school every day, we need to push them to go online to school every day as well. Very important for all of our students. Uh, we're providing supports for our students with special needs, uh, our English language learners. We're providing uh, counseling support, social workers, uh, and clinical staff are providing supports to the families. We've set up uh, through Mrs. Gerace a warm line, which is, uh, allows a parent uh, or student to call in and get access to one of our uh, social workers, psychologists, or counselors, and uh, they can walk them through any anxiety, isolation issues, cabin fever, um, and any anything that is causing them issues, we will support them. And uh, uh, we also have access, uh, and that's 9 a.m. to uh, 9 p.m. every day, on, uh, and we have a support line on our district website uh, that, that families can access. And so you're not alone, uh, so we want to be uh, in support of all these great partners who are on this call today as well. Uh, for our seniors, we're having a call today. Uh, those are our uh, senior students. Um, they're, they're very concerned about graduation, their prom. Uh, they, they're concerned about um, making sure that they're able to graduate this year. Uh, so very important, we'll have that call today at 11 uh, a.m. And so any senior can log into our website and be part of that. Uh, and it'll also be recorded in English and Spanish so that they, they can see it at another time as well. Um, for uh, the the City, if, if you have any influence or any uh, connection with Paramount, we would like to know if uh, late June uh, graduation for middle school and high school uh, is, is, will still be a possibility. I know it's too early to tell right now, um, but just to keep that on, on everyone's radar who is connected with the Paramount, and we certainly will reach out as well um, as uh, many people are, are concerned about not having the graduation. So we, we will figure out something. Um, and then uh, I would say, lastly, just want to um, the the report that Mrs. McDonald gave regarding the Youth Bureau. Uh, one of the things that we're concerned about is is academic loss. While we are providing online programming for our students, uh, um, it, we're, we're concerned about the fact that that students may lose uh, academic skills uh, throughout this time frame, and not sure exactly when we we will be returning. And so uh, we want to partner uh, with the Youth Bureau, uh, Parks and Rec Department as, as a possibility uh, to, make, to, to try to infuse and, and have the district provide some support uh, academically for these programs so that we can uh, build some robust learning opportunities over the summer to try to mitigate some of the loss of academics that, that may have occurred during this uh, extended time of, of not being in school. Uh, so, Mrs. McDonald and uh, Mayor, if if you'd like, we can certainly speak to. Uh, I believe it's the Parks and Rec Department that runs a program for for children in our middle school. Uh, and if so, we'd like to have a conversation with them to to uh, bring some academic supports into that program, and uh, uh, also with the youth bureau as well, um, so that we can provide some of those academic needs uh, uh, or supports for students who have that need. 
Uh, that concludes uh, my report and uh, appreciate being on the call. And again, I, I thank the city leadership for setting up the stakeholder meeting. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Uh, absolutely. I know that, um, I know that Dr. Mauricio, uh, thank you for that report. I know that you met with um, Parks and Rec recently with um, Deputy Mayor McKenzie. And she said that it went, went very well. And uh, your, your push to, to give these children, you know, everything that they need to be successful is, um, you know, she is, is, is admirable. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely uh, figure a way to get, get to that and, um, you know, try, try to accomplish that uh, together. But, but thank you for, for all the work that you've done and, and Ms. McDonald as well. Um, you know, it's just, <laughs> with everything that's going on, you you two have definitely been, um, you know, showing 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 your your passion for the children and the youth in this community. So thank you. But um, we'll, we'll definitely work that out, and I'll include Deputy Mayor McKenzie as she she wanted to be a part of that, and she's also the liaison for Parks and Recreation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Mauricio. Um, I did have a, a question um, specifically about the child care. Um, it, it is my understanding that the child care is, is specifically for first responders, but I'm just wondering about some of our essential workers um, in peak skill who um, have a, a two parent household or a one parent household where both parents are at work or if it's a one parent household, the, the one parent is an essential worker. So they're at work, whether it be um, at a, a senior living community or um, at our DPW here in Peekskill. I'm just, I'm just wondering um, if there are, if there is capacity to also uh, provide these services for some of our essential workers that, uh, because their their work is still happening, um, don't have the ability to look look after their children during the day. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, um, so certainly we can. Um, have conversation uh, to figure out if we can support some of the city essential workers as well. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it is, uh, the governor has created some opportunity to look at that title, uh, essential workers. So uh, maybe uh, you and I can have a conversation with Dr. Foster, who's running the program for our district, uh, and we can talk about what that uh, need would be, and certainly uh, we can include the city manager, et cetera. So um, we're certainly open to uh, looking at some other opportunities for essential workers that are uh, related to the city uh, and, and, and look at that as well. So yes, uh, so if, um, if, if you want to set a call up, we can certainly do that and have conversation about that. Okay, great. Yes, we'll, we'll definitely follow up. I'm, I'm seeing the city manager nodding. So thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. Mauricio. Does, does anyone have any other questions regarding the school district? I'm hearing none. Uh, so we can, uh, so we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Uh, thanks again, uh, Dr. So can I just ask a question quickly? Sure. Um, this is city manager, Andy Stewart, and this isn't just for Dr. Mauricio, but it, the, the service to provide counseling kind of hotlines for families and students seems like such a great thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm hoping we can kind of find out about the various services like that, that exist that might be accessible to city residents. Um, because I think there's going to be a need. Um, I'm assuming that the school's services in that regard are intended just for families that have students in the district. Um, so to me, it raises the question of, of families who aren't in the district, but may need guidance or kind of coaching through the crisis in various dimensions and what other services might exist. Um, and to that end, I, we have one volunteer who's, who's kind of doing some research on that and trying to put together the various hotlines that the state and the county have, trying to figure out what is the best number for families to call who just have questions about how to handle their affairs, how to support their, their um, family members, maybe people are in quarantine, you know, they're struggling, trying to figure out how to stay healthy. You know, what's the best number to call is basically my question. If you're not in the school district. Now, there may not be an answer to that question right now, but uh, it's on the list. Thank you, city manager. Yeah, just real quick, Andy, I think the, um, I, I think the county has um, sent us information in, in one of those informative emails about um, 
uh, stress relief hotlines, trauma hotlines, and um, uh, uh, you know, uh, emergency um, uh, hotlines. Uh, I, they, they, there's, it's, it's in one of those emails that we have. Yeah, I know, I, I've seen that too. And um, it just seems like there's several around, you know, county, state, and so on. Right, right. And I was looking for maybe if, if someone has some experience with those things, they can let us know what's the best one. You know, oh, okay. okay. To promote right, the yeah. residents. Gotcha. Andy, this is Cynthia from CHOP. We have a list that we put together and I'll email it to you and then you can disseminate it as you feel appropriate. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Are there any other questions for Dr. Mauricio? All right. So next up, we have uh, Lieutenant Andrew Grant from the Ambulance Corps. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Um, just some quick updates. Uh, before I get into it, a little background on the Ambulance Corps. We're a contract service to the city, uh, mostly volunteer based. We have roughly about 100 volunteers on our roster right now. Uh, we staff three rigs with one paid person on 18 hours a day. Um, for our first quarter, we responded to 810 calls. That's roughly about an 18% increase from last year's quarter. Uh, we can't entirely suggest it's from the virus, um, but we are seeing an increase. And because of this increase in new protocols, we have to start wearing more PPE. So we restricted our uh, riding membership from down to a three-person uh, three crew to a two-person crew. Uh, that just cuts down on the use of the PPE, and we can try to save some what we have. Um, regarding PPE, we've been getting a lot of donations from the community and stuff. We're very thankful for that. A lot of help from the county. Um, uh, other than that, it's just getting through it with the calls and stuff like that. We have a good group of volunteers that are coming and staffing the rigs every day. Um, we're getting three ambulances out, you know, constantly. Uh, we're very happy and thankful for our volunteers and the support from the community. Um, one way that we ask for the residents to help us out is any donations for PPE, any masks, gloves, anything, uh, just so we could keep going and you know do what we have to do. Also, um, we ask anybody who does call 911, please answer the questions that the dispatcher asks them. Um, so it prepares us on what PPE we should be prepared for before we step into your home. Um, Andy brought up earlier, uh, later today, around six o'clock, all the emergency workers are gonna be going for a convoy to Hudson Valley Hospital as a thank you for them, um, for what they've been doing, because um, they've, been, they've been getting hit pretty hard too. Uh, other than that, operations are good, uh, volunteers are good. And uh, we just thank the community for the support. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Grant, for, for all your hard work and for all the hard work uh, from your team. We, we really, truly appreciate, appreciate it and no recognize that you are all on the front line. So very, uh, thank you again. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Lieutenant Grant in, regarding the Ambulance Corp? I'm not hearing any. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant Grant, for joining us. Uh, next up, we have Cynthia Knox from CHOP. Good morning. Thank you. And thank you, Council Member Agudelo and the mayor and the city manager for organizing this. It's incredibly helpful to hear from all the different sectors about what's going on. So this is really great. Um, and I guess I want to start out, um, I'm in a in a place of gratitude this week uh, because the collaboration that has been happening somewhat spontaneously in Peekskill has been incredible. Um, and um, this is such a difficult time for everybody, but people are really pulling together. And I just specifically wanted to give a shout out to Jonathan Zamora, who has been working with us um, on food as well as Manzers, uh, because that's the biggest issue that we're dealing with right now at Fred's Pantry. Um, so um, 
Fred's Pantry went to a pre-bagged grocery uh, three or four weeks ago with social distancing, and that's been working very well. Uh, we just opened for a second day a week yesterday. So now we do Saturdays from 8 to 11 and Wednesdays from 4 to 6. We're serving three times the number of people that we normally serve. And our expectation is that that's going to continue to grow. Obviously, when unemployment benefits start coming in, that will ease some of the pressure because there's a lot of people right now that have no money. But still, um, we, we expect that to, to climb. So our biggest challenge right now in terms of Fred Pantry is making sure that we have enough inventory. Um, and one of the things that we're very focused on is providing fresh meat and produce. Um, because we understand that people don't have money to supplement what we provide them. Um, in the past, you know, uh, it's very much been, you know, we provide as much food as we can with the understanding that people are going to be able to supplement that. And now because of, um, you know, loss of jobs, as well as what's happened with the downtown supermarkets closing, um, that puts more pressure on people. Um, so that's really been uh, a big focus for us. Um, I know this has been a, a big discussion um, led by uh, Jonathan. Food deserts um, are a concern uh, in Peekskill and the areas where there not, is not yet um, regular food distribution. And the second issue that's a real concern for us is um, grocery delivery to those who are not out and should not be out. Um, right now, we have no mechanism for doing that. And uh, uh, that's, I guess, one of the action items um, that I'm gonna highlight for Fred's Pantry. If there's somebody who's interested in organizing that, um, and they want to contact me at Cynthia, K-N-O-X, at C-H-H-O-P dot org, that would be great because I think, you know, these social distancing measures, obviously, as the medical people indicated, are having a positive impact, and we want to be able to continue that. Um, the second um, action item is for Fred's Pantry is asking those that can to donate. Um, the community is being very generous and we're incredibly grateful for that. For those who can donate money, donate money. If you can't donate money, um, what we're looking for is bulk items. We don't have the resources right now to take a lot of small donations. Um, so that's why we're asking for bulk donations. Um, does anybody have any questions on Fred's Pantry? I'm about to switch to a different topic. Okay, um, just to let people know um, what's been happening at the Jan Peak House, we put in rigorous um, sanitizing and social distancing, distancing measures at the beginning of March. Um, and um, we have now created an area so that if there's somebody who's symptomatic, we have an area where we can isolate um, the person. We have an amazing staff. I, I can't say enough positive things about the people that work at Jam Peak House. Um, right now, we have a limited crew on site. We have a couple administrators, including myself, who are on site, and client care workers who work directly um, with the clients. Um, case manager, social workers, and finance are all working remotely. Um, our off-site site clients who live in their own apartments, they're receiving remote support from their case managers and social workers, and they're getting um, uh, materials, you know, as needed in terms of groceries and cleaning supplies and, and whatnot. Uh, so that's my report. Great, thank you so much, uh, Cynthia. Does anyone have any questions for Cynthia regarding Fred's Pantry or CHOP or the Jam Peak? Yeah, I just wanted to say okay. something. Uh, Cynthia, it's Mayor Rainey. Good morning. Good morning. I, um, I know that um, Jonathan, Jonathan has been doing a fantastic job, so I, I can't thank him enough. He's, he's been doing a fantastic job before any of this even started, so mm -hmm. I can't thank him enough. But um, I know he's um, in communication now with, with West Cop. I think that you're, I'm sure you're probably familiar with them. They're looking to um, 
work with uh, uh, Feeding Westchester as well to bring additional um, uh, food deliveries to the city of Peekskill. And um, after after they uh, got word about the um, uh, Sea Town closing, um, they offered their services. Their, their their biggest challenge right now is just because um, they can they can pretty much put the order out at any time and have the delivery come you know almost any any day of the week. Um, but their biggest issue right now is having is finding the right finding volunteers as well as protective gear for the volunteers. Um, I know that they're working with Jonathan now, so he may be able to speak more on that. But if if, if not today, um, after the phone call, I can surely try to put you in touch with West Cop and maybe um, some of the volunteers that you have can help. Uh, you know, uh, uh, rectify that. And um, they were definitely looking to allocate a certain amount of time of the food deliveries um, to, to the seniors uh, who are specifically impacted by the closure of Seatown. So um, I, I'll wait to see what Jonathan says. But again, if not, I will, I will share your information with them and share the information with you. And that way maybe we can work out another, a few extra additional food deliveries during the week. That's, that's terrific. Thank you so much. We have volunteers. Uh, who are willing to work. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. Uh, sh short thing. Does anyone else have any other questions? No, and, and I do also want to mention, and I think um, uh, Councilwoman Patricia Riley mentioned this on Monday, that uh, the Family Service of Westchester is also offering uh, senior delivery services uh, for folks, for seniors who are in need of grocery and, and shopping, um, grocery shopping and delivery. So um, if, if there are any folks who are over the age of uh, 60, and I believe that they are covering all of Westchester and Southern Putnam County, um, who do need shopping and doorstep delivery, you can reach out to them at 914-242-7433. Alrighty, well, thank you so much, Cynthia, for providing those uh, very helpful updates. Um, and again, if, if you have uh, the ability to make donations, offer your time um, with CHOP, uh, please reach out to Cynthia. Uh, this is, our our community members are, it's extremely a vulnerable moment for many of our community members, especially those who are homeless um, and who are facing financial hardship. So any help from the community um, that can be provided is very much appreciated. So now we'll move on to Jonathan Zamora from our, uh, who will give us updates on our seniors. Jonathan? Uh, yes, good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, and I just want to say that uh, the collaboration uh, in this time of need by all of the community stakeholders have, has been uh, beyond inspiring. Uh, and if there's uh, a more time to, is better suited to believe in peak skill, it's now. So I think that we're all going to be proud of our efforts and uh, continue working together and, and foster the spirit of community that uh, makes peak skill a great place. Uh, so in speaking a, a little bit, uh, shifting gears about the senior programming, um, you know, we've faced significant impacts uh, by the COVID-19 uh, epidemic. So uh, temporary suspension of club activities, dining room attendance, exercise classes, uh, special programming, and the essential socialization component of our department uh, has all been temporarily halted. Uh, our hope is that all members remain healthy and our priority is to satisfy their nutritional needs, keeping in mind the safety of our dedicated team of employees. We look forward to warmly welcoming back all members as soon as we are safely able to do so. The program is operating in an abbreviated manner using best practice guidance from the Westchester County Office of Senior Programs and Services. We have shifted our approach and are delivering meals to medically homebound clients in a manner consistent with safety protocols, including social distancing delivery methods. Uh, as an action item this week, our department delivered meal boxes to our clients through a partnership with Feeding Westchester as part of the senior grocery program. Uh, so we acknowledge the community need for nutrition, nutritious food and have connected with the rideshare program, as, as Councilperson Aguadello was mentioning before, uh, who has recently mobilized a large pool of volunteers to assist seniors and immunocompromised individuals obtain groceries without stepping into a supermarket. Uh, the phone number uh, for those wanting to uh, participate directly, again, uh, is 914-272-7433. Um, I, really, for a call to action for the community, uh, it's important to remain connected with our family, friends, and neighbors to help us navigate this emotional time. 
Spend a few minutes today and call your social group to check in and remind them why they're special to you. Spending a few minutes reminiscing does wonders for feel-good emotions and makes this difficult time easier to manage. So shifting gears a little bit, as, as uh, Cynthia Knox was mentioning before, um, we really have a wonderful collaboration of community stakeholders, the Peekskill Rotary, CHOP, uh, Manzers Landscaping, uh, and of course uh, sort of the backbone of the entire operation, Feeding Westchester, has, has lent tremendous support uh, for the month of March. Peak Seal has distributed close to 100,000 pounds of extra food to the community, which is incredible uh, when you start to think about. So um, in collaboration with these other groups, we are establishing sort of a calendar, um, a community calendar for, for public access that can everyone can look at and see where food is available at any time during the week. Um, also included are the addresses, the phone numbers, any contact information, and we'll be making that uh, live and accessible very soon. Uh, so again, I just want to appreciate everyone's uh, cooperation and, and communication, again, in working together um, to help get us through uh, the, the current epidemic. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for your very inspiring words and for all, the, um, all your efforts on this um, and, and thank you for reminding us of our humanity and and just the, the little things that we can do as as people and checking in with our loved ones and keeping that channel of communication open it's, it's truly so important right now uh, does anyone else uh, have any questions for Jonathan regarding the senior programming um, I have a quick question Jonathan good, good morning man how are you good morning good morning mayor Good, good. Um, just a quick question, not necessarily in particular to the senior program, but to the food delivery. Was um, the lady uh, Marquette, was she able to get in touch with you from West Cop? Yes, she, she did uh, reach out to me. We spoke uh, briefly. I know she mentioned uh, she had a, a plan uh, to sort of get additional groceries into the community. She had to make some additional phone calls with some stakeholders to, to more solidify the, the, the plan. Uh, and I look forward okay. to, to hearing back from her very soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All righty. Uh, next up, we have Reverend Graham, who will be giving us updates from Papa. Reverend Graham, there you go. There we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. I just want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of this conversation. Thank you to all the stakeholders. You're doing an incredible job. And um, just to add to what Jonathan said, it's just very, very inspiring to hear how Peak Skill has risen to the occasion. We have not missed a beat, and it's just wonderful to be a part of this um, collaboration. The Peak Skill Area Pastors Association is playing catch up with the community at this point. We had our first uh, board meeting last week, and we will have our general meeting next week on Tuesday, and we'll know more of what the congregations are doing, the houses of worship are doing to uh, address this pandemic. Uh, we have been scurrying, trying to find a way to care for our immediate communities and learn all kinds of social media ways to have worship and provide pastoral care. But we certainly realize that we need to also be available to the community, to the larger community, to those persons who are not affiliated with PAPA, the congregations that are not affiliated with PAPA, but also persons who are not involved in any type of um, worship community or faithful community. We're grateful for all of the, the meals that are being provided, the educational system that is uh, certainly responding to the needs of our students and to our young people. But we realize that with this pandemic, there is a spiritual crisis as well. And people are going to need support, not only now, but after we come through this, we need to, to develop ways to bring people together to address fears, anger, uh, anxiety, and concerns. And so we're going to be discussing all of that at our meeting next week. Um, uh, we've talked briefly about uh, perhaps putting together a Zoom um, worship event or pastoral counseling event where people can call in and share their concerns until we're able to get together face to face. Uh, we've talked about a, uh, a podcast where people might be able to um, receive a positive message and we would take turns from the interfaith community. 
on providing spiritual support for persons. Uh, and so I do hope to have more information to provide in this call at our next gathering. Uh, maybe not next week, but the week after that, after we've had an opportunity to hear how the congregations are doing and after we can come up with ideas to provide support for the wider community. There are um, congregations among us that are not involved in Papa. We need to also reach out to them. And there are a few congregations that do not have pastors or leaders at this time. We need to check on them to also see how they are doing. We are open to suggestions and ideas as to how we can provide spiritual support for the Peak Skill community, and we're eager to uh, respond to that. Um, the president and myself will be taking turns participating in this conversation. Um, Reverend Carlos Figueroa, the pastor of the United Methodist Church, is our president. I'm vice president of Papa, so you'll see us interchanging uh, this responsibility, but. We do plan to respond in the most positive and effective way that we can beyond our immediate places of worship going forward. So thank you for this opportunity to participate in the call today. Thank you so much, Reverend Graham. Does anyone have any questions for Reverend Graham on, on what she just covered regarding Papa? Alrighty. Well, thank you again for joining us, Reverend Graham, and we look forward to uh, hearing about more ways in which we can support. Uh, Hello, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mayor. All right. So uh, my apologies. Uh, Reverend Graham, thank you sincerely for that. Um, uh, I really, really appreciate having you on the, on the call. Uh, thank you, Councilperson Agudelo and City Manager Andy um, for, for including all of the people that they brought together. Um, there was an idea of doing like a virtual um, prayer for the community. Um, I, I know that, uh, well, I don't know if um, they've actually spoken to you. I sent an email to somebody, uh, to, to, to the rabbi, his email was the email on the um, city website and it bounced back. Um, um, I, I tried it from a few emails. I don't know if he ever got it, but for my city email, it bounced back. But no. there was a, an idea um, that I was speaking to Pastor Culture about um, of doing like a virtual prayer for the community. So I'll, I'll, I'll contact you to see if that's something that, that could be done for those who, like you said, spiritually just need that, that uplifting and, and, and to hear that word. And they can't, um, with social distancing is so limited now. And I know some of the pastors have been doing, um, um, you know, Sunday services online, you know, mm -hmm. but a, a citywide prayer would be, uh, virtually I think would be very effective. Uh, especially, you know, second, coming to the point where you mentioned about just that spirituality. So um, I'll definitely reach out to you and we can, you know, elaborate more. Thank you. We'd be more than happy to do that, to work right. with you in, in organizing that. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions? All right, so last but not least, we have our city manager who will be giving an update on city operations. Uh, thanks so much, Councilman Agudelo, and everybody for being on the call this morning. I just want to make a couple of brief notes about city operations. Um, first of all, the city obtains a daily COVID-19 positive uh, count um, and data set from the county which we provide to first responders, the police and the fire department, so they have some idea um, as they respond to emergencies which households have COVID positive folks in them. Um, there's a little bit of a lag time on this data. It's protected by the uh, confidentiality law. So, um, but we do publish the, the total number of cases every day on the city website. People can look at that. Um, the number on Tuesday was 182. That was uh, about double what it was a week before that. Um, so the count's growing and, uh, and it's, a, it's a pressing concern obviously for everybody. Uh, we, like everybody else, are urging stringently and repeatedly that everybody follow health guidelines, staying at home, maintaining physical distance, um, washing hands, wearing masks, and so on. Uh, we did have uh, first responders report back at our last city council meeting. Um, the city council meeting is uh, broadcast on TV for the public. So we had the police, the fire department. Uh, we also had an appearance by um, the uh, chief medical officer from HRH, which we really appreciate. Um, helping us understand um, some specifics about the health crisis and also the 
strategies that our first responders are using to protect themselves so they continue to yield emergency service. Um, on that note, our police department and fire department are both following new shift schedules to keep their teams separate from each other so that if one person gets sick, it won't contaminate more than one team. And using that approach drives up our overtime a little bit, um, but we feel it's the responsible thing to do um, to protect the first responders and they're all working real hard. They appreciate the support of the community, um, those mask donations and other kinds of support. Uh, folks coming out tonight, maybe virtually to celebrate the work of first responders and, and hospital workers uh, is real important. Um, I just want to mention also that yeah, as people are probably aware, all city buildings have been closed to the public for the last week or so. Um, since the, the beginning of the health crisis, the city is providing services administratively through phone, online, and even using, in some cases, virtual walkthroughs by the building department to be able to help people to um, kind of get ready for permitting and so on. So the, the essential services are being provided, obviously, sanitation service, public works, and um, most of our administrative staff is working remotely trying to keep those folks healthy and they're, they're uh, you know, all of us are investing in remote work tech and, and trying to get that right and having, having some um, success with that. And this meeting is an example of that. Um, in terms of meeting technology, um, we will progress as far as city council meetings over the next few weeks to adopt a Zoom based method so that the public can actually call in. Right now we are um, providing for public participation. As always, folks can watch the meetings on television and they can send in via email questions or comments to the city clerk on items that are on the agenda. Um, and we hope to get to the point where we actually have um, um, the ability to take calls. Um, we just have to kind of perfect that method a little bit. So um, the city staff is doing well. We haven't had a lot of impact from COVID-19. Um, with employees, a few people are sick and, um, and folks seem to be hanging in there. Um, so we're happy with that. Uh, the rate of infection hasn't been too high within the city ranks yet. The, um, I just wanted to mention again um, that the closure of, of Seatown really was a blow to food accessibility in the city, to folks who would normally walk and get their groceries there. And there's been some advocacy by the Business Improvement District in the city to try to get improved bus transportation out to the shopping center where Stop and Shop is. Um, there's an issue with that. The bus stop there really isn't convenient for folks to get down to the supermarket. Buses cannot get into the parking lot because of the restriction on their turning radius and so on. Um, and so we've kind of put out a call for, for uh, obviously the grocery delivery services which people need and which Jonathan and Cynthia spoke to. Um, that sector really needs to grow to help people get food and not have to go out. Um, and we're also posting, because the taxi companies are operating with reduced staff, we're posting, and then I know the bid and the chamber are posting updated lists of which taxi companies are active and hoping that the taxis continue to, to provide rides. I know that they have risks they're facing and so they have diminished staffing as well. Um, so there's been a little bit of a problem for people, people getting rides where they need to get. Um, there's definitely budget impacts of this health crisis on the city, which we're charting out. You know, we expect tax revenues, like sales tax, for example, to fall rather dramatically, building permit revenues. Um, costs are going up for overtime, probably ultimately for health insurance, and things like that. So people just need to be aware that right now we're in, in sort of a fragile state. Um, we don't have trend line data yet, but the city budget is going to be different in 2020 than was assumed when the budget was passed in 2019. And, and for that reason, um, we can expect to see adjustments and changes in, in as, we, as we take action to try to make sure our essential services are funded. Um, but there's definitely gonna be some austerity and some real concern around, um, around how to pay for those services. Um, the city has taken various measures to try to provide a little bit of economic relief in terms of waiving of parking enforcement regulations. And um, we just asked the uh, governor for a 21 day extension on property tax uh, and, and a waiver on, on penalty fees for, for that. And, and that option, it, it, 
under under state law, what we're available to go for is a, a pretty limited benefit, um, but it could help. It will certainly help some people who can't make the April 30th deadline if they have an extra 21 days to pay their property taxes. Um, it's it's an important move that city council supported. I asked the governor, and hopefully they'll approve it as they have the authority to do under these circumstances. Um, we're looking for other ways to to support local business, obviously, and to provide um, kind of stress relief to our city residents. For example, the um, late payment of water bills won't be penalized. Um, matters like that where we could take some action to provide a little bit of relief, um, we're happy to do. You know, and it's always within the bounds of law and feasibility and and, um, and also the need to make sure that the city budget and all the vital services are actually funded. So that's gonna be an ongoing concern. Um, we have a focus of a, a team focused on cost recovery because the state and federal government are talking about it and leading towards um, you know, providing reimbursement for certain crisis related costs. So we are focused on that to make sure the city is positioned to get whatever funds it can, kind of like when uh, after the hurricanes, when cities were able to access money to pay for the you know, sort of excessive costs of, of repairs and so on to infrastructure. Um, this crisis is very different, but some of those same funding streams also exist. So we're looking at that. Um, I just wanna say, you know, there's a million little things that come up. And um, recently, for example, you know, in the, in the state, in the, in the county, keep, you know, they keep providing new guidance as, as, as policymakers address new situations. And just a little example of that is landscaping. You know, is landscaping an essential service or not? Um, and we have folks calling in saying, hey, there's someone out there blowing leaves. Are they supposed to be doing that? Um, and there's some blurry lines there. We really want to encourage folks to just do their best not to go out and, and operate if it's not an absolutely essential service. And in the case of landscaping, um, horticulture is broadly speaking um, categorized as non-essential. So folks shouldn't be hiring landscapers to plant bushes and kind of tidy up yards and things like that. Um, landscaping is permitted as, as an essential service when it's for pest control or maintenance. And what that means is if there's a tree branch that's gonna fall, um, if there's a sight line problem, shrubbery needs to be trimmed back from the sidewalk, great, go ahead and do that. Um, but don't hire your landscapers to come in and, and do work which is really primarily aesthetic um, because that doesn't fall within the bounds of, of what is permitted as essential landscaping, which is pest control and really safety maintenance. There's gonna be discussion and there's gonna be kind of a slippery slope. And as the um, greenery grows, there'll be more incidents and questions related to that. And we really don't want our, our police and code enforcement officers to get dragged into enforcement situations um, when they have other things they have to do. So thank you very much. I'll just limit my comments to that for now. Um, express my appreciation along with everybody else for the amount of collaboration and community pride that we're seeing every day. Um, it's nice to hear from the police department that um, crime is down, uh, knock on wood, but it, it feels like um, the community is, really has a sense of the gravity of the situation and people are um, you know, doing their best to take care of each other and be reasonable. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, city manager. Are there any questions regarding city operations, Reverend Graham? Is there any idea on when the new supermarket is at Apple Farms on Welcher will open? Reverend, I will find out the answer to that. I know that there's a, there's a plan for it to open and I was wondering the same thing myself. So I'm writing that down and I will get back to you with any okay. information that might be available from the building department as far as sort of where they are in their opening process. Okay, it may be easier for people to, people to access that market if we can provide some kind of transportation there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Graham. Any other questions? I'm not hearing any. Um, so with that, I, I just want to also express my appreciation to uh, all the stakeholders on this call, to the mayor, the city manager. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to jump on this call and, and collaborate on this initiative. Um, we are in a time of crisis and this is very new territory for all of us. And I, I understand that things are shifting quickly on a day-to-day -day basis. And 
So I, I really appreciate you all carving out time um, to, to join us and to provide these updates for our residents. And I'm sure uh, folks at home uh, are also very appreciative of you joining, joining us in this effort. Um, lastly, I just want to remind uh, folks watching that um, as, as was echoed by a number of our stakeholders, uh, please remember to visit our city website at www.cityofpeekskill.com for the most up-to-date news on the uh, response from the city uh, in in regarding the coronavirus outbreak um, and continue to follow public health guidance, including frequent hand washing and social distancing to help slow the spread of the virus and enable medical services to meet growing demand. Um, you can also visit the CDC. I know that they recently announced that if, if you are going out, um, it's best to wear a mask if possible. Uh, I know that, that a number of our community members uh, locally have been sewing masks, creating masks. Um, so if, if you are in need of one, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to myself um, or to the mayor. We, we're happy to connect you with folks who are working on that. Um, but if, if, if you are expecting to go out later today, I, I know that the recommendation has al also been to use scarves, a t-shirt, um, really anything where you can co cover your, your nose and your mouth uh, to uh, mitigate the spread of this virus. Um, if Because we are to assume that uh, we most likely all do have this virus, um, it's, it's, it's important that we follow those recommendations. Um, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you want to give any closing remarks? Oh, sorry about that. Couldn't get the mute button on my finger. Um, yeah, I yeah, just sincerely just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, Lieutenant Grant, um, for those of you who may or may not know, I, uh, the um, uh, Cube, Cube Smart um, business right down on Highland Avenue. I think it's Cube Smart. I want to say Cube Smart. They donated about, I want to say, close to 2,000 masks uh, to the city for first responders. So I do believe we still have some more. So, um, you know, Lieutenant Grant, if um, you know, the volunteers down there need any uh, uh, masks. They're just a surgical mask. They aren't the N95s, though. But they're, um, you know, if anybody just happens to need any masks, please contact our city manager and he can distribute them or we can figure out a way for you to, uh, for you to pick them up or, you know, whatever needs to be done. Um, but I do, again, just want to say thank you all for being on this call. Um, importantly, just please be mindful of social distancing. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, stuff, um, you know, circulating the community as far as um you know maybe there's this kids playing in the park still i mean the city's taking taking off the back uh the rims to basketball courts they've the school district has closed you know sporting courts tennis courts basketball i mean um, soccer courts basketball courts volleyball courts like all of these all of these things have been um shut down temporarily just to try to encourage the importance of social distancing if you see something uh it's a new york city state quote quote if you see something say something um, our goal is to enforce social distancing as best we can. Um, because of this, we're limited to the amount of police officers that we have circulating the city as an, you know, on, a, on a regular basis. But if you see something, say something. We really, really want people to be mindful of the impact that social distancing has on this entire crisis that we're facing. If, if you notice anybody at a park with 15 people, 10 people, even seven people that just happen to be close to each other, please just inform us and let us know so we can get on top of it as best we can. But more importantly, I'm asking everybody on this call and everybody that's at home watching to promote social distancing. Let people know the importance of staying apart from each other, as well as keeping your hands clean and and uh, and, and and just just being safe. You know, using your common sense now. Um, thank you, everybody on this call. Everybody that's tuning in. Um, I look forward to the next one. But um, uh, it, it's very very important that we get these messages out. All of you that are on the phone call, if there's any information that you would like us to share, if we can't share it on the, on the, on the city website page for any reason, my, you can send it to me, to my email. I'll be happy to post it on my social media um, platform. Um, my email address is a rainy, which is A-R-A-I-N-E-Y at cityofpeakscale.com. If you send anything over to the city manager, again, that can't be posted on our city website for whatever reason. You can send it to me or any of the council people who have social media, and we'll be happy to share it. But please continue to push the 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 with the the importance of so of social distancing. Other than that, I just want to say thank you all for being on this call. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Rainey. Uh, with that, uh, I wanna thank you all again for, for those of you that are on the call. Thank you for those of you that will be tuning in and watching this later on today. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great Thursday. Thank you, Councilwoman Agudelo. On behalf of everybody here, appreciate your efforts along with the mayor and everybody else. Keep up the great work and I look forward to talking next week. Great. Now, I don't know if anyone wants to debrief, you know, we'll be, the, the recording will be ended right after that statement, I'm sure. But um, it, Andy, I know that you had it on the agenda, uh, a debrief, or I don't know if that's, 